Are you fed up with flat, lifeless textures for your low poly objects in your games or your scenes? Well, I've got a great fix here to give you nice, rich, warm textures, which is still really optimal in your game engine. So I'm in the shading workspace. I've got my screencast keys down the bottom here and I'm in Blender 4.2. I've got my viewport on the right hand side with my model of the tree and my shader editor across to the left hand side. And you can see that my materials are very basic. So I've got an orange material here, brown, green and gray, and they're just basic materials with basic colors. Now this works perfectly fine and you can export this to a game engine and hook up each of the materials. There's a slight problem when you get lots of these objects in the scene and you've got lots of different materials. It can get quite fiddly in your game engine to hook them all up and it can apparently be a little bit slower on performance. It can become even more awkward if let's say you wanted to texture the bottom of these icospheres with maybe a darker color to indicate some shading. You need to add a new slot for this. So I can go to my slots, add a slot here, add a new material. I call this darker orange and then I can choose a darker color into edit mode, select some faces at the bottom, and then I have to assign those to that darker orange. So assign, see what that looks like. And you can kind of see the effect that has, and perhaps I'd make it slightly less dark, somewhere around there, I think. And we've got a kind of natural shadow that's happening there. And you might want to do this with lots of other low poly objects, separate their colors out into slots. But again, when you take that into the game engine, that means you need two materials for one object and it can get very busy. So I'll just undo those changes of the slots and show you the more optimal and perhaps professional way of doing it. It involves using a color palette like this one here, sometimes called a texture atlas or a color grid. And we unwrap our objects and move them to the different color areas. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll first of all create a new material. So I'll click on our icosphere here, add a new material and I'll call this color grid. And I'll select all the objects making sure this one is the active object. So selected last, I can hold down shift to make sure that's the case. And it's highlighted yellow, so I know it's the active object. I can then press control L and link materials. Now all these objects have copied the material of the active object. You can find that link material under the object menu, link transfer data, link materials. But always remember it's the active object that the others are copying the material from. So now my objects all share the same material. I can add my color grid in the beginning here. So I'll just zoom out a bit. I can drag my color grid in at the start here and hook it up to the color. Now, none of my objects have a UV map. So what we'll need to do is unwrap them and place them onto the right part of the texture. To do that, I'll bring out a new window. I'll change this. Incidentally, I'm pressing middle mouse button to go across my menus. I'll change this to the UV editor. Zoom in a touch and let's open up my color palette just there. So that's this texture just here. So now if I select an object, I can go into edit mode I can go into the unwrap menu by pressing U. Now you should just be able to choose unwrap, but you might find that you get some error messages at the bottom there because we haven't marked any seams. If you do get any problems, you can press U to unwrap and just use something like project from view. And that literally takes the view of the viewport and unwraps it like that in our UV editor. I can now press S to scale this down and G to grab to move it into position. So I'll move it over to the green. And we should, if I go into object mode, see this green grass now. So I can do that for each of my objects into edit mode, U to unwrap and project from view in my UV editor, scale them all down and move them to a color. Now, obviously you're a little bit limited to the colors you have on your grid. And you can obviously get different grids with different color palettes or create your own. You can also select objects at the same time. Make sure you have an active object, go into edit mode, select all, project from view, and you can scale them all down together and move the UVs together. I'll do the same for the rocks. Into edit mode, select all, U to unwrap, project from view, scale those down and move them to an area where it's got a gray texture. The nice thing about this is that we've got one material called color grid and I can change things like the roughness and all the objects will change. That could be seen as a limitation as well. If you wanted different roughnesses on different objects, you would therefore need a new texture map to go with that. And the great thing is when you take this into your game engine, you'll have one material for all your objects. As you can see, they're all sharing that same material. So how do we get nice, rich, wonderful looking textures on our object like we saw in the original image? Well, you can take this color grid idea, but instead use gradients. So in a program like Photoshop, you can create a gradient texture by selecting an area, adding a new layer and creating a gradient like so. Of course, adapting the colors accordingly. And you basically want long, thin strips like this for each color gradient, 
going across your texture. And then when we come into Blender, we can open up that gradient texture. Incidentally, you can load Photoshop files into Blender, which makes it a little bit quicker if you want to make any adjustments to it. Once we've loaded that into Blender, we can open it up in the UV editor. You can see my UVs are all over the place now, so I do have to re-unwrap. But let's choose the tree, for example, into edit mode. I'll go to front view with one on my numpad, so I'm projecting straight from the front. Press U to unwrap and project from view. And you can see that unwrap there. I'll scale it up so you can see it nice and easily and scale in the X. So I'm squashing them all in together and then G to grab and move them across to that bark texture there. And I can scale in the Y if I want it to take up the whole gradient. Let's see what that looks like. And we've got that nice gradient going through our object. I can do the same for the top and I can do them all at the same time. Again, make sure you have an active object when you're doing this. I'll go to front view, into edit mode, select all with A, U to unwrap and project from view. Scale in the X, bring it across to my autumnal colors there and scale in the Y. We get this lovely gradient as if the light is hitting the top and causing this shadow going down. And I can do that to each of my objects. So again, into edit mode, select all, scale in the X to squish it down and then scale in the Y. And I've got two to choose from here. If I scroll across my menu with middle mouse button, turn off the overlays, I can see the results there and I can move it around accordingly if I want it to be a little bit brighter or a little bit darker, maybe somewhere like there, or I can choose this other one over here, probably this one here. And each of the rocks, I'll do them all together, but you might want to do them individually. Front view, edit mode, select all, U to unwrap, project from view, scale in the X, scale in the Y, and bring them across to the gray. We've got some really warm looking textures there. Now the obvious limitation to this is it's a little bit fiddly to create these textures, and if I want to adapt any of the colors, I have to come into the layer, adapt it slightly, then go back into Blender and then reload in my texture just here, which can be a little bit fiddly. So playing with the textures and finding the right colors is a touch more awkward. But the results, I think you'll agree, are fantastic. And you still have the advantage that when you take this into your game engine, you've got one material. So there's one texture call, as it were, which should make things fairly fast and you've only got one material to add to all your objects. So hopefully that's gone through the ins and outs of texturing low poly objects for game engines and how you can get some really nice, rich, fantastic looking materials using that gradient technique. Thanks for watching and I hope that helps.